My name is Brian Dennehy. I'm the general manager in the AWS Observability Organization. I've been on Amazon for more than 15 years, but almost all of that time spent in the Observability Organization, leading teams to build amazing products and services that are used by customers all over the world to monitor and observe their applications, infrastructure, and cloud resources. I'm delighted to welcome you to the AWS Observe and Operate series. When I first started out as a software developer more than 25 years ago, observability was a relatively simple task. In those days, we would typically run an application server on a single server with a hot standby. And then we would install all of our applications onto that application server. Gaining an understanding of what was going on was relatively easy. All we had to do was log onto the box, look at logs, and perform some simple Unix commands like grep and sed and awk and ps. But as the world sort of changed and has adopted cloud computing, increasingly moved to microservice architectures, adopted containers and serverless computing, such as AWS Lambda, and even used Internet of Things to place sensors all across factory floors, it is critical to leverage deep and complete observability across your application estate to gain the insight you need to ensure your applications and services are consistently up and running and performing for your customers. Increasingly, the application is the customer experience, from booking travel and using them in airports and train stations, to playing real-time games, to online banking. Customers expect and demand that applications just work all the time. And achieving these high levels of performance and availability require deep and pervasive observability across your entire estate. When something goes wrong, you need to quickly detect diagnose, troubleshoot, and remediate issues. After the event, you need to perform post-mortem analysis to identify what happened to take steps to prevent recurrence. Running workloads at scale requires engineering for efficiency, which requires a deep understanding of resource usage and utilization. Take, for example, Thomson Reuters, a company that operates in more than 100 countries and has more than 38,000 employees. These employees need to authenticate themselves and securely sign into customer company systems no matter where they are. The need for a new SSO solution was part of a broader shift towards cloud development. Thomson Reuters built a failover solution that uses AWS Lambda, a serverless event-driven compute service, and leverages Amazon CloudWatch, which collects and visualizes real-time logs, metrics, and event data. An Amazon CloudWatch alarm is automatically initiated when metrics indicate poor application health. Should two health checks fail, Thomson Reuters use Amazon Red 53, a highly available domain name system web service, to automatically forward traffic to the closest AWS region to minimize latency. Once the issue has been rectified, traffic reverts to the original AWS region. Using this method, Thomson Reuters have seen failover times drop from 30 minutes to three minutes ensuring that its global workforce have secure and easy access to company systems. In a completely different domain, SkyAlert, an innovative company that quickly alerts millions of people living in earthquake-prone areas, promoting a culture of prevention against natural disasters. SkyAlert offers early warning for earthquakes in Mexico and some western regions of the United States. SkyAlert has more than 3 million users who rely on its alerts in the event of an earthquake. To provide this early warning, SkyAlert deploys IoT devices to take continuous readings searching for activity. SkyAlert uses Amazon CloudWatch to monitor this IoT network across more than 120 geographic locations in Mexico and North America. With this system, SkyAlert can control the opening of gates for firefighter access or close gas and electrical systems to prevent fires. And at AWS, our service teams across the globe are using AWS observability every day to perform these tasks. And we are delighted to welcome you to this course where you will learn how you can use AWS observability to achieve your business and operational goals. You will also learn how to leverage AWS observability to understand and improve application and system performance, enhance the experience of your customers and take steps to optimize your costs. We will also share with you best practices that we've built up over decades of operating Amazon and AWS. So all that remains is for me to say thank you so much for your time and enjoy the course. Thank you, Brian. Now we'll move into the first session. This talk is being presented by Toshul Dudwala, 
Tosha will discuss why observability is critical for your organization. Good morning, everyone, and warm welcome to the AWS Monitoring and Observability Webinar. We have an exciting session ahead packed with valuable insights and use cases. My name is Toshal Dudwala, and I'm the worldwide specialist focusing on AWS observability services such as Amazon CloudWatch, AWS X-Ray, as well as managed open source services like Prometheus and Grafana. In this session, I will demonstrate why observability has evolved into an indispensable aspect of every organization's operations. We will explore key customer trends, delve into fundamental principles that underpin observability strategies and understand the driving forces behind its growing importance. Observability is no longer a mere buzzword. It has become a vital component in ensuring the success of any enterprise. But first up, we need to recognize that there is no such thing as an application that never fails, one that always keeps on running whatever happens. AWS CTO Werner Vogel often loves to say, everything fails all the time. We must assume we will need to deal with failures and often exactly when you don't want them to happen. Now, before we begin and diving into the observability and criticality of that, let's understand some macro customer trend. We've seen the customers, they are looking into react to situation efficiently by having visibility into their infrastructure and applications. They want to provide optimal user experience beyond SLAs, being green, that is SLO. So for an example, a website might be up and running, but the actual user experience interacting with the website might be slow. So while your SLA of website uptime is green, the actual SLO of user experience is red. The customers, they also want to know the exact cause and time when the incident happens. They want to have visibility to ensure the applications are performing as intended. They want to drive infrastructure efficiency and also at the same time reducing the operational cost. And I'm sure most of this sounds familiar to you as well. So, well, how are they doing it? Well, they have developed an org-wide monitoring and observability strategy. They have built a proactive approach to the incident management. They are using the latest and greatest tools to modernize their application monitoring and observability. They have consolidated their existing monitoring tools with the AWS observability services to reduce the operational burden as well as help with the cost. So before we look into what is observability, let's first understand how you know your application is performing correctly. That is monitoring more than just failures. Is your application actually performing as expected? Even if your monitoring dashboard is all green as we just talked about before, are your customer actually getting the user experience you want them to have? And what do you expect it? That is your SLOs. What's the usage of your application? You likely want to know how many people are actually signing up, how many page views are you are getting, what parts of application are hitting limits and congestion. The most importantly, what about the business relevant information? What's the revenue being generated? From what geographic regions are you seeing the biggest growth? How would an outage of a particular application component affect your business? What trends can you visualize and plan for? This is all about monitoring is more than just service level agreements or SLAs, but it needs a service level objectives. Well, what is observability? Here at AWS, this is how we define it. Observability describes how well you can understand what is happening in your system, often by instrumenting it to collect metrics, logs, and traces, to achieve operational excellence and meet a business objective. You need to understand how your systems are performing. And observability gives you the ability to effectively detect, investigate, and remediate. This can and should improve your operational availability. That is, reduce MTTR or mean time to resolution. What is the cost of an operation failure to your business? 
That is why observability is so important to understand that. You want to detect, investigate, and remediate the problem as fast as possible to reduce that MTTR. Often customer, they don't detect issue as soon as it begins. There is often a lag from an, when an issue starts and when you are notified. This is a day of life for many SRE engineers. You want to reduce this as much as possible. Detection should be proactive and multifaceted. Anomaly detection is a key tool in the toolbox as well, as well as the ability to link them together related to alarms to reduce alarm fatigues. You can respond to failures quicker if you alert near the source of the telemetries, that is logs, metrics, and traces. Investigation is where people spend most amount of time during an operational event. That is the largest contributor to MTTR, extended downtime. Cutting through the chaos and understanding what to focus on is really important and remains a difficult task for many customers. They're leveraging logs, metrics, and traces to help you understand quickly the root cause. Correlation across this data inputs, metrics, logs, and traces is the key here. Your time is valuable, and you need to ensure you are focusing on the stuff that matters during an operational event. Well, once you have identified the cause of the failure, now it's time for the remediation. This might be the start of fix, patch, auto rollback, et cetera. But you want to try and automate your deployments and changes as much as possible. There is nothing worse than trying to fix something and making the situation worse. Don't forget to do a post-event analysis. Determine how you could have prevented the failure in the first place. Your goal should be to ensure the same issue never happens again. But even if it does, you can identify and remediate automatically. The foundation to observability, as we all know, is metrics, logs, and traces. But it's the data which drives your business decision. These data are logs, metrics, and traces. They are all equally important and are key component to observability. They help you to maintain your SLAs by detecting, investigating, and remediating the problems to achieve your availability, reliability, and performance of your infrastructure and application that we just talked about. So now that we have a good understanding of what is observability, and why it's important, let's look at how one should build an effective observability strategy. Your strategy should be shaped by your business objective. Your goals and approach to observability should be oriented around your business objective or your SLOs. This will help you determine what signals matters to reduce your mean time to resolution, the MTTR, as we've been talking from last few slides. And effectively build a full stack observability solution. Let's see how one or you can figure out which signals to monitor. If you look at the outside in approach, where the signal it begins with establishing what good like looks like to your customer. Some examples includes what is the web page response time? Our customers are shopping carts, getting field purchases. Are they getting any errors? So to measure that, here are some of the SLOs you can monitor. For an example, the page load time, as we discussed before. Are the purchases completed successfully? And in what time? What is my conversion rate for my new customer acquisitions? How fast my new features I'm rolling out are being adopted? These are all related to your end user behavior and performance. And one should be using these signals to build your SLOs. If you look at inside out approach, this begins with establishing what good looks like to your backend applications. Some example includes slow queries to your database, or just the overall integration health of your infrastructure. Or if you're running modern applications, the health of your containers. And these are some of the SLOs you should be looking at to monitoring. What is my query time for those database or my metrics? 
What is the CPU utilization? What is the disk usage? How is the API response time is? Are there any error, faults, and retries rate? These are all internal facing signals. And then you can combine these signals so you can gain a full business insights and to measure your SLOs. The CPU percentage gives you the system level telemetry information. This will drive you your web page response time SLOs, which gives you the business level metrics. The web page response time is translated into your customer sentiments, which is where you get your business insights. This all comes down to the data and what insights you are gaining from them. Data drives decisions and real-time data drives real-time decisions. Increasingly, downtime in applications and services cost money. Therefore, it is critical and imperative to resolve real issues as close to real-time as possible, helping you to maintain that critical SLAs such as availability, reliability, and latency. And AWS can help you gaining these insights. It can help you understand your applications and infrastructure health. It can improve the performance and availability of your applications. It can reduce your operational cost via fully managed services we offer. It help you increase your customer satisfaction and elevate your customer experience when you improve your end user experience. Here's an example of one of our customers on how they are using our service, the booking.com. Many of you might be using that service. They're using the AWS Observatory services to collect and measure the real world performance metrics of their websites to ensure their customer experience is meeting their SLOs. Our goal is to ensure customers have a great observability experience, no matter what service they use whether they're using the AWS Observer services or one of our partner services. AWS Observability is an end-to-end -end observability. Our services and capabilities can meet your needs from out-of-the-box observability to cross-account observability, to streamline data collections, the login sites, as well as your open source needs. For an example, one of the great thing about Amazon CloudWatch is that the zero-touch management approach. You simply use the CloudWatch agent or open telemetry agents to get your data and we'll take care of the rest. We automatically scale to manage your data retention policies. Additionally, it offers curated experience across container and Lambda and helping you quickly gain and maintain observability in those environments. It's a single pane of glass. But if you are into popular open source of tools such as Prometheus and Grafana, but find it increasingly difficult to manage these environments, especially at scale. We have seen it time and time again from a lot of our customers. Our managed open source observability services, Amazon Manage Grafana and Amazon Managed Service for Prometheus, how do you eliminate the undifferentiated heavy lifting associated with managing these tools? Our end-to-end -end observability helps customer monitor infrastructure and containers, cloud services, underlying resources. Therefore, improving your user experience, your application performance, and achieving the SLOs, and in turn, helping you do the cost optimization. But we have come a long way, and we have been trusted by millions of customers. We built our flagship observability services, Amazon CloudWatch, as most of you would know, to solve the challenges and diagnostic, not our external customer, but our internal application first. Our internal teams at Amazon and AWS, we use this CloudWatch for our own observability needs. And over the years, we continue to develop new CloudWatch features for our own observability challenges. But then we turn them into capabilities for our customers. CloudWatch has evolved from monitoring just a simply our infrastructure from the start of Amazon EC2 in 2009 to applications and to end user monitoring now. And in recent years, we've expanded into managed open source offering as well. 
Millions of AWS customers use AWS observability services today. But we also partner and integrate with a wide range of third-party observability providers as well, as well as the cloud management tools so that our customer has the best experience. Just to give you the idea of the scale we are operating at, Amazon CloudWatch is used to monitor more than 11 quadrillion metrics observations, and it ingests more than six exabytes of logs. You may ask, what is quadrillion? That's a 15 zero in a quadrillion, or one quadrillion is 1,000 trillion. That's a huge number. What makes up AWS observability? Here is how we like to think about it from an end-to-end -end perspective. We recognize how important observability is to every organization, no matter the size in every industry. Whether you are on-premise, hybrid, in the cloud, public cloud, or multi-cloud, whether you are monitoring your networks, infrastructure, apps, containers, or devices, you need observability to help you drive the decision you make and get the outcomes you want. So I'll start with the sources and the workloads you bring to the table, what data you have. As we looked at before, data drives decisions. In our case, the data is coming from over 120 AWS services but also other multiple data sources across your on-prem, hybrid, or multi-cloud or containerized workload. And in the age of microservices and containers, it's easy to spin up resources. There's data coming from your workloads, IoT sensors, on your factory floors. We collect open source or AWS native data. Once data is collected, we enrich your data to be used for monitoring your applications and your systems give you data context so that you can use them for your monitoring and observability purpose. Make your data work for you. We provide powerful data insights and analytics capability. Our capabilities range from aggregations, dashboarding, alarming, analysis, insights, correlation, and more. But in a nutshell, what this gives you is an end-to-end -end observability from your end user to your backend applications. As we looked at before, your outside in to inside out give you a full stack observability for your end-to-end -end application. If you want to deliver the best customer experience for your end customer, that means increased reliability, availability, and maintaining of SLOs, and speeding of broadcast analysis, no matter where you are, what team you are on, from dev to IoT ops to finance to business teams, Observability helps you understand what's happening in your application in your system and helps you drive your business decisions. I hope this session has given you on why observability is critical and how you should start building your strategy. In the next few sessions, you'll be learning how you can now start using AWS observability services for your key use cases and build better customer experience. Get customer insights from your logs or build modern application observability, both using our cloud native, native tools as well as open source tools. And here are some of the resources if you want to learn more about AWS services meanwhile. We have developed a one observability workshop. This is a step-by-step -step workshop for you to learn more about AWS observability services. We've also developed our best practices guide. This is the AWS opinionated best practices guide on how you can start using our services for your specific use cases. And for those who want to build the observability skills, our AWS training and certification team has a comprehensive AWS skill builder training course available as well now.